Hi, it's Lipstick Gal. Thanks so much for watching today. I wanted to continue on with my chopping block series. My goal is to at least once a week try a whole bunch of makeup that I haven't tried in months, if not years. <laughs> and in the process decide what stays and what goes because nobody can ever use as many concealers as I have before they go bad. So is it good? Is it bad? Does it still work? Do I still love it? And if it's no to any of those, out the window it goes. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. Oh, primer. Hang on. I keep forgetting primer. I'm going to use this. This is from Dr. Brandt. This is the Pores No More Luminizing Primer. I actually like this primer, but I haven't used it in a while. So I'm going to put this everywhere. And then in the pore areas, I should say porous areas, I'm going to throw on the Tarte Smoothing Timeless Primer. Can I feel like this primer is like skincare. It's like another hydrating layer, which is not a bad thing. I needed that. It's getting cold where I live. Oh, I left this morning and it was like 31 degrees. And I was like, oh, and it'd been a lot colder a couple weeks ago. And uh, then it warmed up and I was like, oh, thank goodness. Okay. The end of October is here and it's not like 12 degrees like it had been. Um, but now we're starting to take a very steady descend into cooler temperatures and that's okay, it's that time of year, it's November now, but still, oh, it was a lot of cold all at once. For foundation today, I'm gonna to be wearing the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. I have the shade Porcelain Fair. Here's what's interesting is I remember buying this because it was all the rage. And I used it and it was okay, but I don't know that I still love this. I haven't tried it in a while. So let's see what we think. It smells like paint. Remember that being a complaint and it's not a lie. It does smell very chemical. I feel like this one might be just a hair too light right now. I mean, I can blend and make it work, but just putting it on my skin looks a little light. That's something else I've been trying to do is to get rid of shades that don't suit me, either powder, foundation, concealer, any base product. Um, I've mentioned it before, I spent six years in bed, 16 hours a day, slept most of the time, my health was bad, had lots of brain surgery. I'm definitely not at the point where I need to be in bed 16 hours every day, but I do occasionally still deal with very severe headaches. When you spend as much time in bed as I did, your skin doesn't see the sun and you get very pale. Yeah, this is starting to look a little ghostly. You seeing how white this is compared to my neck? The shade is definitely not for me. For concealer today, I'm going to use this. This is the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. I have the shade NW15. I used to be an NC15, and I think that when I went to get this, they handed me the wrong shade, and I didn't check, and I just walked off with it. So one pump is usually more than enough. I haven't used this in more than a year, and I've had this for a long time. I remember it being a very very full coverage concealer. This was kind of like the answer to all of our high coverage concealer dreams before Shape Tape came out and kind of changed the face of everything. I think it is really good at concealing things. My concern is, what is it gonna look like under my eyes in a couple of hours with powder over the top? Is it going to age me? For powder today, I'm gonna to be using this from Tarte. This is their Confidence Creamy Powder Foundation. This is the shade. It's also in the shade Fair Neutral. This is one I remember I purchased from the Tarte website when they were doing a, you know, seven full size products for like $65. I thought, you know, there's a few things I've been wanting to try from Tarte and I like the idea of it, but I never really got into using this powder. Oh my. I really see. A lot of dryness in the corners of my nose and I think it might be more from the concealer than from the foundation but it could be a combination of both. You know I don't think this is a bad powder. I think what I'm not liking about my base right now comes more from the foundation concealer. <laughs> but I'm so much lighter than my chest and neck. <laughs> I feel like I got a little bit of the Uncle Fester dark eye thing going on. For bronzer today, I'm going to be using this. This is from Fiona Styles. 
This is the Sheer Sculpting Palette in light medium. And it has three very different tones here. I forgot how much I really enjoyed this. I'm hoping I still love it as much as I used to. And I always did a mixture of like the first two shades because the last one's a little dark. I don't know, maybe I'll need it today because I'm so pale. The one thing that I really liked about this is I felt like I could never really overdo it. Maybe that's not true, maybe you can. But I always felt like it was really easy just to kind of scrub my brush in there and then apply it everywhere else. I felt like it never really got bunchy or clumpy or I almost felt like it looked nice. Boy, there's such a stark difference. <sighs> oh, my face is too pale today. For blush as well as eyeshadow today, I'm gonna be using this. It's the balm in the balm of your hand, volume two, it's their greatest hits. And there's a variety of shades in here. Their bronzer is way too deep for me. Their Bahama Mama is way too deep. So it's like, <laughs> I cannot use that. But I think I'm gonna use a combination of this pink based down boy and this peachy based frat boy for blush today. I'm just gonna bounce between the two, knock off the extra and throw a little bit of this on. The farther and farther this gets along, I'm feeling more like I'm wearing like Elizabeth the first makeup, totally white face and really rosy cheeks. Like the cheeks are like popping out. Uh, I don't know if I can make this work. I have places to go today. Oh, I should never do this sort of thing on a day when it's not good. Let's just keep going. I have the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. This is just the original. It's called Be My Highlight Shade 10. This is the one that everybody loves. And I, maybe I've been using the wrong brush with it. I had it and had it and I never used it and I never used it. Oh, I see. Yes, I was using the wrong brush. It's very pretty. I wanted to do a little buffing over the top of my face and I don't like the packaging on this. I'm using the flower, what are you called? This is the Miracle Glow Satin Finishing Powder. I love the powder. The packaging is not a favorite of mine. It's very large, it's very clumsy. I feel like I need to go over my blushy, cheeky, bronzy area because it's a little, not much. So for eyeshadow today, I think I'm gonna start out with a combination of Firm and a, just a touch of Bahama Mama. I'm gonna put that in my crease. What's interesting is that uh, the eyeshadow Firm is just a little bit cooler and Bahama Mama has just a hint of warmth to it and I wanted something kind of right in the middle. I'm gonna go in with the shade Matte Russo here. This is from the Meet Matador. I think the one thing that's kind of limiting to this eyeshadow range that they have in here, and I use even their blushes and bronzers, obviously, on my eyes. I wish they had a lighter shade. So it's nice, it's very much a rosy, pinky look when you add in this Matte Russo shade. The lightest shade they have in here is their Mary Luminizer, so it's their highlight, but you can use it, of course, on the eyes, and that's what I end up doing, but I'm gonna lay this down on the lid. This is kind of like one of the palettes that when I'm like, I need a pretty but an easy, fast look, I pull this one out. Everything goes so quickly. I feel like these blend well. I feel like they're pigmented, but not so much that if you're not careful, you're in trouble. And um, I feel like it works really well. I'm gonna put just a little bit of the Mary Luminizer right underneath the arch of my brow. I'm gonna use a smaller, more dense, short brush uh, to run a little bit of the first shade I put on right underneath my lashes. I think I'm gonna use this shade right here. This is Alice Copper. It's from their Rockstar Balm Jovi palette. And I'm gonna just pop a little bit of this right in the outer corner. I hadn't done anything to really deepen up this area here, but this works nicely. For brows today, I'm gonna to use a combination of the CoverGirl Ultra Fine Brow Pencil in the shade brown, uh, Soft Brown, as well as the Make Me Brow from Essence. I have been searching for a really good 
brow product from the drugstore. For years, I used to use the Anastasia Brow Wiz. I think there are some really good pencil options in the drugstore. Uh, I have a harder time with fiber brow products in the drugstore, but that's maybe I haven't tried them all. I know this uh, Make Me Brow is not a very expensive product. It's just a handful of dollars at the drugstore. And if you like a light tint, I think this works well. The one thing I really want is it says it's a fiber product and my favorite fiber products really lay down beautifully natural looking fibers. I love the Instatint from the Brow Gal and Charlotte Tilbury's Legendary Brows. I feel like they do a really good job of giving me hair-like fibers that look realistic. Whereas this, I feel, is more just a brow tint. And the fibers that are in here, I don't know. I feel like this is a better product for tinting the hairs that you have if you want them just a little bit darker. It's very tinted. I feel like it's not as good at laying down fibers. For liner today, I'm gonna to use this. This is the Drama Liquid Pencil from Lancome in the shade Aubergine. I have had this shade forever. I picked up two of these, one in just a really dark coffee brown, and then this more purpley eggplant shade. When Sephora first started doing their weekly wows, one of their weekly wows was this, and I picked up these two. It's been a couple years, and I feel like they're still really good for using as a liner, but when I want something to sit in my waterline, I feel like the older these get, they're not quite as good at staying. And maybe, maybe they've never been that good, and a couple years ago they were better than anything else I had. Yeah, these don't want to stay in my waterline anymore. It's like I can't even lay down any pigment in here. Well. That's a lost cause. So it works well above, but not in my waterline. For mascara today, I'm using the Trustee Good Vibes Mascara. I don't like the, they give you an eyelash curler on here. This eyelash curler is nothing but trouble. It's only a half lash curler and I need my all my lashes in the curler at the same time, but I did like the formula of the mascara itself. For lips today, I wanted to use a combination of these two lip stains. These are the Tatouage Couture Lip Stains from YSL. Uh, the darker one is number five and the lighter one is number seven. I'm gonna start out with this one. These are like my favorite liquid lipsticks. They feel very comfortable on the lips and the angle of the applicator, this little square paddle-like applicator just makes it so easy. So let me give you a rundown really quickly of what I think I'm gonna get rid of. For sure, I have to let this go. It's the wrong shade. And I don't really know that out of all the foundations, in it's not bad. It's not bad, but it's definitely not my favorite and it's the wrong shade. And I don't know that if I needed another drugstore foundation, this would be my first choice. I'm also going to get rid of the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. It is looking a little heavy and a little dry under my eyes. So those two things are going. This, you know, this, this is pretty nice on the skin, except for, I have so many powders that I like better than this. I think I can let that one go as well. I'm gonna hang on to this because I actually remember really loving it and I liked it today. I think I would have liked it more had my foundation really been sitting on my skin better and I had been paying a little bit more attention application. I felt like I got a little bit too much bronzer and it was looking a little crazy, but I don't know that it's this. I think it was the combination of the wrong shade of foundation and I was trying to make it work with some of this, but I'm gonna try this again because I do love how sheer and how easy to blend it is. All right, so I do really like this. And the, the reason I'm going to this next is because I, I used uh, these two shades here for blush. I think it's really, really nice. I also like the way that the eyeshadow looks. I feel like it blends really well. And I like that it's a palette where you've got a highlight, you've got you know blushes as well as eyeshadows. And if you're not as fair as I am, I don't know, maybe I could wear Bahama Mama now. 
I don't know. I couldn't when I first got it because I was like, pasty white, but I think that, I don't know, I might have to give it a try, but I do think I like that. Another thing that I do like is this. I like this a lot. I wasn't sure about it when I first got it because I really didn't see it that much on my skin. And maybe I was using the wrong brush, maybe I wasn't applying enough, but I feel like this is a really pretty natural looking highlight. I think it's time to let this go, although I do like the mascara. It's the same price as the uh, Blanco Mr. Big, and that's my favorite mascara. This one looks pretty nice, but I hate the gimmick on the other end, and I always have to take this cap off to successfully open it, and I feel like I'm only using half the product. I'm not using the tool end, which I don't really think works well, but I feel like the mascara and the formula is nice, but this guy's been around for too long. This pencil has been in my project pan for the whole year and I think I've used it three times. I think it's safe to say I can let you go. It's also getting so old now that uh, it feels really dried out and it won't even lay down on my water line. And it used to and it doesn't anymore. And I don't want to fight that fight. All right, so for brows, I think I'm going to let this Give Me Brow go. It's a little too wet. I don't like the fibers in it. I do think it's good for tinting uh, and maybe even holding in place a little bit. If that's what you're looking for, it might work really well for you. And it's really, really inexpensive. We're talking like two, three bucks. Really cheap. I do really like this CoverGirl. This is the Ultra Fine brow pencil. This is in the shade Soft Brown. I really like this. I feel like it gives me good definition. And it's that nice balance between not too hard not too soft. This is really good. I did also like the way that my skin looked um, when using this luminizing primer from Dr. Brandt. These lipsticks, my heart is still going pitter pat. I love these. And you know I am not a liquid lipstick kind of person, but I really feel like these lipsticks are really nice because they don't completely dry down matte. It's been several minutes and you can see it does live a kiss mark, but that doesn't bother me. But it, it doesn't really travel outside the lip line. It's comfortable, it's hydrating, and it's matte. But it's not dry and cracky. And if you need to reapply, you can throughout the day. So I think this formula, if I'm gonna wear a liquid lipstick, this is what I'm gonna be reaching for. So these are the six products that I'm getting rid of today, all of my base products. And then um, quite a few things for eyes and brows right here, mainly because uh, they're old. Uh, these two definitely are expired. And this one here, I feel like it's not my ideal product. So the rest of it, I really, really, really did like. The one thing that I wasn't planning on using today that was kind of like the hero for me was this powder here from Flower Beauty. This is their Miracle Glow Satin Finishing Powder. I didn't talk about this. I used this for buffing when I felt like my blush was a little too out of hand and it worked really pretty and it didn't make my skin look anything other than beautiful and skin-like. Decluttering this way is my favorite way because I get to try the products again and to see. I remember really loving this pencil, but it's obvious now it doesn't perform the way it used to, which means that it's old, it's gotta go. Uh, same thing with this mascara. It's a nice mascara, but I've had it open for too many months. It's definitely cannot just hang around. And then other things that I really remember loving, it's nice to see that they still perform the same way. And one thing that I was like, I never really got it. I kind of get it now. Yeah, no, I really like this. And I can see me putting this someplace where it's easy to reach for when I want a glow, but not one that's like, bling, bling. You can see me from space. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have too many things in your collection. Um, if you're trying to figure out what to keep, how do you go about it? Uh, if you haven't touched it in a while, do you just like, goodbye? Because I used to do that with clothes. I haven't worn you in a year. Goodbye. But I find that it's, Easier to do that with certain articles in my home and makeup is hard because I, I love makeup so much. <laughs> I really, I struggle with it because every single one of these items I bought thoughtfully and with joy. So thank you for watching. Let me know how you're doing in your makeup collection. Do you have it all contained in one little bag or does it kind of sprawl everywhere like mine does? I hope you have a great day. Subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you again soon. Bye.